Church, let's stand up and sing this together. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the
some noise for Jesus this morning. Come on, church. All right, before we sit down, we're going to pray together. We're going to pray from all the prayer requests that have come in and every request that's represented in this room. But before we jump into prayer, I want us all to remember how big God is, how he still moves today. And the mountain in your life is like a pebble to him. The thing you're facing, his will can be done with it. So whatever it is, whatever you're going through, let's lift it up to Jesus and believe he's as big as he says he is, amen? Father God, we come before you. First, we just praise you, Father. We praise you for your greatness, for your love. Father, we love you so much. And we lift up the requests that have been sent in today and the ones represented in this room, and we give them to you, God. And we just ask one simple thing, let your will be done. Let your will be done. We trust you, God. We trust you. Father, I pray that you would just continue to move. Continue to move in these lives, God, in all of our lives. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen, amen. Now you can go ahead and grab a seat. I just want to say, happy Valentine's Day. Who's excited for Valentine's Day? Love it, love it. It's a great day to be in church. You know, so meet some people. I don't know, for the singles out there. <laughs> hey, we got some announcements for you. Let's check the screen out. Hey there. Jesus is the light of the world, and we are here to share that with our city. So be on the lookout for this invitation to let the light in all over town. One thing that's huge for us is connecting and getting to know you and getting you exactly what you need. The easiest way to do that is for you to text the word connect me with no spaces to 411-247. Just after service, you can meet with someone and ask questions and get to know what we do here. Just look for the sign that says seven minute meeting just after service. If you're online, you can text that same connect me to 411-247 and check the box that says, I'd like a call today. Pastor team also meets just after service out in the foyer by the pews. If you have questions or need prayer, they'll meet with you. Next week, teams will be out in Reno doing the work and pointing people to Jesus by picking up trash. If you wanna get plugged in or start your own team, text the word Reno Love to 411-247 that's Reno Love, no spaces to 411247. We'll get you everything you need. Be sure to wear red. And if you don't have anything red, you can grab a Reno Love t-shirt or sweatshirt out in the foyer after service. T-shirts are $10 and sweatshirts are 25 and they're available on our website for pickup only. Thanks for being here, guys. Have a great week. Awesome. So much cool stuff going on. Oh, there it is. I was like, I'm pitched. It's dark up here. I can't see anybody. Hey, so much cool stuff going on. Don't you love the sign in the lobby? Let the light in. What a cool message to be sending to our city over this season, right? And uh, I'm really excited for this next announcement that I get to make to you. Uh, are you guys ready for a really cool announcement? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You don't feel like, uh, I'm sure the people online are a lot louder. Are you guys ready for a cool announcement? All right. I'm really excited about this because here at Grace, one thing I love about this church is we love kids and we love students. And we're going all in this summer for kids and students. Uh, what I mean by that is we're gonna have five camps happening at Grace this summer. Yeah, come on. We're gonna have a middle school camp, a high school camp, and three weeks of kids camps happening here at Grace over summer. And the really cool thing is today, we're not opening registrations yet, but you can save your spot today. You can save your spot because we want this to be a community thing. We're gonna be branching out to the community. We want this place this summer to be a hub of light for every kid and every student to come and just experience Jesus. So, but we're letting you guys sign, uh, save a spot today and all you have to do is text the word CAMP to 411247 and fill out the little form. Spots are going to go quick, so make sure if you have a student or a kid that you want to get signed up, do that today. Save your spot. Cool? Who's excited for this summer? Yeah. I, I love being a part of a church that does just so much for the community and so is so generous. 
and we see it over and over again is we give um, we give money away to org- organizations we bless the community with reno love but we can do all of that stuff because of your generous giving and we don't think that giving just changes the community and changes the the city we live in it also changes us and we give and we learn to surrender and give God what is God's, our life is changed. So we're gonna give you just a moment to go to God, listen to him and see what he wants you to do with this. The instructions are on the screen and we'll get back to service in just a sec. Would you please stand with us?
incredible to think that God loves us. And in fact, so many people will come to me sometimes and go, what's the deepest theology in scripture, man? I want to go deep. I want to go deep. And I go, there's nothing greater, nothing deeper than the concept of the fact that there is a creator God who loves you, who gave himself up for you and for me. That is the greatest thought, the deepest thought that you and I could ever, ever experience. There's nothing deeper. So let's pray. Lord, Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for this place. Thank you for Grace Church. Thank you for loving us. Lord, I pray that today that we would just take one step closer to you. And if we do, Lord, our lives will never be the same. God, thank you for who you are in our lives. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. And if you're watching at home, thanks so much for joining us. You may be seated as well if you're not already. Uh, my name is Miguel. Love being a part of as much as I can of this church and uh, in this community. And let me just say this. Um, if I haven't said it already, happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day. If, did you know it was Valentine's? Okay, it's Sunday, so it's kind of a strange Valentine's Day. Uh, uh, listen, so let me just say this. If you forgot, if you forgot it was Valentine's and you've been in a relationship up until now, you might not be anymore. But there's a prayer team that meets under the bleachers after service, okay? Just want to encourage you, maybe, to go there, okay? Um, but uh, listen, I, I got to be honest, talk about forgetting. Um, I am forgetful, okay? I'm just going to confess it now. I am forgetful. Uh, if my wife is watching online, I, see, I can admit it. See, I'm forgetful. Um, I forget things all the time. Things like, um, man, I'm really bad about this. I forget names. I forget names, okay? I'm really good with faces, but I forget people's names and I'm a pastor and I'm like, oh man, what if I forget your name? They're going to think I'm like really, really bad pastoring, you know? And, and so like I'll meet someone one week and then the following week I'll see them again and I'll remember like the whole story and the details that they shared about their life. But I cannot remember their name sometimes. And so I'm just like, hey, you buddy old pal, get over here, brother. You know, like, you know, I, I don't know. I just forget their names. Um, there are, yeah, if I ever say, hey, you, you're like, oh, poor Miguel. Um, there's times too, like, I'll forget, um, maybe you're like me, I forget passwords. Does anyone know, that, like, does, do you feel my pain here? Okay, I forget passwords on my devices all the time. It feels like a lot, like, more recently I forget passwords. Because, like, we live in a day where there's, like, finger IDs and face IDs. And, and so I don't feel the need to remember passwords, ever. And, and until there's that time where I've got to, like, update my password. Or there's a data breach, which I never understand. And then I'm like, okay, let me, let me try this. And I have to remember the, the password. And I'm like, I have no idea. But praise the Lord, there's this little button that says forgot password. <laughs> Click. And sometimes it'll take me down this road of like, and then it's like there's these security questions. You know what I'm saying? That apparently I selected like five years ago when I created the account. And now I'm going like, and it's the most, it's the most random questions, okay? So then I'm, it's like I'm being asked, okay, uh, what was, the, you know, the name of your best friend's dog in first grade? And I'm like, well, gosh, create new account, right? You know, so <laughs> I guess I just forget. You know, people, we are just prone to forget. We forget things sometimes, and it's okay. You know, we give each other grace, and, and, and we understand that, but... You know, why is it that we forget so easily sometimes? And I get it. Hey, we're people, we're human. We make mistakes. We forget things. But, but there are situations, there are things in life that can actually cause us or, or threaten this a little bit more and cause us to forget a little bit more easily. All right. All right. Things like this, like things like fear, fear. When we are really fearful about something, uh, you know, fearful about what may or may not happen, fear can easily drive out our faith and we forget our faith in Christ. Trials, when we're going through a really hard time, trials can shout so loud. 
You know, it, it's so loud, the trial and the situation, that it shouts over the promises of God. And we, we forget his word when we're going through a difficult time and all that he promises. Or how, how about this one? Um, we forget so easily when we get offended. <laughs> Like, no joke, like when we like, uh, uh, you know, we were like, yeah, you know, love people and I'm going to be kind today. And then someone offends us and we're like the whole, the whole like, you know, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Like you immediately forget that. You're just going, no, oh, I don't even remember that. The pastor never talked about that. I'm offended. I have rights, you know. So when we get offended, we it's just, man, we forget. Or, or, or this one's probably more common in, in our culture. Uh, we forget when we get busy. You know, it's probably the most common response I get. Hey, how you doing? Busy. And I was like, <laughs> it's like, we're proud of it. Oh, I'm busy. I'm busy. I got like 10 jobs. You know, I'm just busy. Um, cool. But when we're busy, we forget because we're just moving so fast. And when we're busy, even the smallest things, we can forget. And, 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 and being busy, listen, it could be good sometimes, but a lot of the times, busy just stands for buried under Satan's yoke. Because if he can't make us bad, he'll make us busy. Okay, he'll make us busy and we will just forget the things of God. Let me just read a quick little a passage for you. It's not on the screen. It's a little Bible bonus for you. This, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verses 11 through 14. Listen to this. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and your stocks increase, and you get your stimulus check, okay? No, emphasis added, okay? You get, okay, all right. Um, and, and all you have is multiplied, then your hearts become proud and you, will for, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So being busy can just, man, we, we forget things sometimes. And sometimes it's the things that are the most important. I remember growing up in a, in a church and as a kid, I remember seeing at this front of the room, uh, right under the pulpit. What's a pulpit? I don't know. It, but it's like this. It's just like big wood. You know, it's crafted by the men in the church or something. But it was big. It was the, they called it a pulpit. And, 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 uh, and right below that, there was this table. And on the table, there was inscribed this phrase, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Has anyone ever seen that phrase before? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I remember as a kid looking at it going, what am I supposed to remember? And what is this? You know, I just, I just see it everywhere. And since then, I've seen it in some form or fashion in churches, like in archways or it's inscribed somewhere here or there, you know, and I see it all over the place. And I think to myself, you know, why does this phrase have such a prominent position in our faith and in, in the church. You know, uh, certainly I, I go, okay, well, yes, Jesus said it, so there's that reason, but there are several places in the Bible where we are instructed to remember. We're encouraged not to forget the things of God, but it seems like this command of Jesus stands out from the rest making it a priority for you and for me to really pay attention to and really abide by. So today we are in part two of our two-part series called Priority. And today we are going to take communion together. We're going to take communion together because uh, communion is a priority for you and, and for me. So today I want to explain what communion is but also what it is about communion that you and I must remember, okay? Must remember. So if you have your Bibles, you got your devices, turn them on. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. This is Paul, the apostle Paul. He's writing this and here's what he says. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this. There's priority language right there. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For when you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now, quick little history lesson. If you've never been in church before, if you've never read the Bible before, you have no kind of Christian or faith, you know, understanding. You have no idea what this whole like washed in the blood. You're like, that sounds gross. You're like, oh, what does that mean? You know, it's scary. You know, all that. I could see that if you've never been in church before, you don't understand what's going on. That could sound kind of strange to you. So let me explain what this is, what, what this communion is or what's called Passover, okay? Back in the Old Testament, okay? Long time ago, galaxy, far, far away kind of thing. All the way back in the Old Testament, there's this guy named Moses, okay? He's a pretty prominent figure in the Bible because there's movies made about him, Prince of Egypt and, and some others and like, like all kinds of fun, fun movies that come out about Moses. And Moses is used by God. He goes to this guy named Pharaoh. He's like the big top dog in that day, the king kind of, kind of status. And he goes, hey, let my people go. You know, let my people go. I don't know. Whenever I think of Moses, I think of like a really deep baritone, you know, like a let my people go, like, you know, base. I don't know. That's just Moses to me, okay? Just leave, leave me alone. Don't ruin my image of Moses, okay? So Moses, he goes to Pharaoh and, and God uses him through like all these plagues and all these like wonderful miracles that happen uh, to, to just deliver his people, to say, hey, let my people go from Egyptian bondage. So the last plague is the angel of death, the death angel. All the babies, were, uh, the firstborn were going to be killed. And so God tells his people, sacrifice the lamb, put the blood on the doorpost. And when the death angel comes, it will pass over your home if the blood is there. And that's where we get this idea of Passover. And every year since then, the Jewish people will come together to have this Passover meal or what's also called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And this is a massive, sacred meal. And it's, 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 everything has symbolism to it. I mean, the, there was these bitter herbs on the table and the bitter herbs represented the bitter slavery and bondage that the people were in. And, and the salt water represented the tears of all that they went through. I mean, uh, there, there was these four cups. It wasn't just one cup. We didn't think of that. There's all these four, these four cups and everything had a symbol and a meaning. It was this, this massive event of what the people did when they... We're eating this meal. So now we're here back in this, in this passage of scripture. So Jesus, he's meeting with his disciples and he says, do this in remembrance of me. What does that word, word remember mean? Real quick, okay. When you think of this word remember, don't think of it as just in memory of. Like, oh, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's, it's not like that. In, in Greek, it's, it's the word uh, omnesis. Amnesis, can you say that? Amnesis, amnesis. So it's this word that's very, has a very deep meaning to it. It's not just in memory of. The, the better definition of this word remembrance is an affectionate recalling of the person himself to mind. So we are recalling a very real experience that you and I have had with Jesus so much so that we Feel it. Think, think of it as um, just like when you and I sin and sometimes it can overwhelm us so much so that it affects us with guilt. And you can see it all over our emotions and our bodies and, and how we carry ourselves. We're just broken, right? In the same way, we can recall or remembrance the things of God and what Jesus has done in our life so much so that it affects us. It makes us grateful and joyful. And you're going, Miguel, man, you are just excited today. I'm like, it's because I remember. I remember Jesus, right? In this moment, I'm remembering what he's done. That's where it's coming from. That's what that word remembrance means. It is a very deep reminiscence of it. It's one thing to just remember the date of your anniversary. You know, like, okay, I remember that day. Cool, got it on the calendar. It's a whole other thing to mentally, emotionally walk through and remember where I was, what I was wearing, what I felt when she walked down the aisle and I started crying like a baby. Like, I just, I remember. And it, it, all of a sudden, it brings you to a place where you can 
feel it. You're walking down that reminiscence, that memory lane. That's what it means to remember. That's what this word means. Now, there's, there's the practice of commun- the communion is done in community. Okay, uh, like what, what, what we're going to do today as a church, during a church service. You can do it at home with your family. You can do it in a small group. However, even though the practice of it is done in community, there are things that we can learn as individuals that we can practice as individuals in our life. And as we remember what Jesus has done in our life and what we've experienced walking with him, this this. this Amnesis. These are some things that communion actually teaches you and me to remember. Communion encouraged me to, to, to remember that we cannot save ourselves. I can't be more clear. We cannot save ourselves. We need a savior. We cannot do this on our own. And let me just, that, that might have offended you. I don't, I don't mean to, but, but in our culture today, there is what I call a try harder theology. When we fail, try harder. When we sin, try harder next time. Uh, when we don't meet our goals, try harder. When we don't meet our New Year's resolution, try harder. Everything's just try harder, try harder, try harder. And I'm not against working hard. That's a good thing. But in the life of the believer, when you're walking through this life, this, this Christ life, it is not about trying. Listen, it's about dying. It's about trusting. So here's the invitation. The invitation is God is inviting you and me to come and die. Jesus actually gives a very graphic illustration with this in the Gospels. He actually says, if you're going to follow me, You're going to take up your cross. To a first century like crowd, the crucifix, that was serious death. I mean, an instrument of torture and capital punishment. If you're going to follow me, you're going to take up your cross and follow me. You're going to come and and die. Die to what? We're going to die to trying trying to do it on our own, trying to, trying to save ourselves, trying to find salvation in someone else or somewhere else, trying to fill our life with other things. See, we need to stop trying and we need to start dying for whoever will lose their life will gain. For aside from God, we can do nothing. Why? Because we need a savior. We need Jesus. You see, the the Christian life isn't just hard or difficult. It's impossible. You can't do it. You and I can't do it on our own. But with God, all things are possible. There's only one guy who pulled it off and they named it after him. (laughs) Jesus. And so I get, I get that that's a hard reality. It's very humbling for us to hear something like, we can't do it on our own. Especially if you're super independent, you're an entrepreneur, you're firstborn, you're the only child. Like, I get it. Like, I get that whole situation. You just go, but I can do it, Miguel. But but God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. And as humbling as that is for you and me to realize, it is imperative for us to remember. So communion says, You can't do this on your own. You need Jesus. You need a savior. But communion also encourages us to remember that Jesus delivered us from sin. Delivered us from sin. Listen, I I talk to so many people on a regular basis that will come to me. They've given their, their life to Jesus. They put their faith and trust in Jesus. And they come to me and go, Miguel, but I sinned so bad last night. I don't know what I could do. I don't think Jesus could save me for that one. I mean, that was bad. Friday night was a bad night. Oh my goodness. There's no, God does not have enough love for me, Miguel. Like, and now you might not say all those words out loud, but that's how we're living. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, right. And we're just in this guilt and shame lifestyle because we have forgotten that God has delivered us. Jesus, the person of Jesus, delivered us from sin. And, and, and Dan, just 
Watch the message from last week. Pastor Dan said it so well. He said, you no longer are in a relationship with sin. That's what that means. We're not in a relationship with them. We broke up with that old ex, like over text message. Like you don't have to answer their call anymore. Right? We're not in a relationship with sin. So stop answering their messages and their phone calls. Move on. You're in a relationship with Jesus now. Right? He's delivered you from that. So communion teaches and encourages us, man, we can't do this on our own. We need a savior. Also, Jesus delivered us from sin. But communion also encourages and teaches us to remember to love one another. To love one another. I know that sounds like the most simplest idea, but it has such profound meaning, especially in our world today. We need to love one another. And when I look at the disciples, listen, the disciples could not have been a more diverse group, okay? From from uneducated fishermen to a tax collector to to a betrayer. They were a drama fest of a small group. You know what's incredible is in today's world, the church, you know what we try to do? It's like people want to sign up for a small group, but it has to be like, it's like e-harmony. It's like we have to be compatible, you know, or it's not a great small group. So we're like, man, you, we have to have the same like music genre, like it has to be the same. We have to have the same like lifestyle and the same style and the, and the same, same theology and the same political views. And the same, like everything has to be the same. And if it's not, then I'm out. Like, don't even get me started. Well, here's this like very diverse group, nonstop arguing, debating, and probably try to kill each other at some point. And then Jesus comes into the scene goes, I want to lead that small group right there. And I can't wait till we have this really special meal together. And I bring this up. What if you was going to betray me? Like, you know, like this is how diverse this group was. There's an old, old song, uh, Growing up in church, I, I remember at some point we sang it, but it's the song of uh, when we all see Jesus, uh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. You guys know that song? Okay, I'm not just crazy, right? Okay, cool. Um, we sing that song, and when we think about like, okay, when we all, who is all? Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every race, will sing and stand before the throne, shouts of victory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. But lean into this real carefully. Everyone look this way. If you're watching online, turn up the volume. It's imperative you understand this. You and I cannot stand around the throne if we are not willing to sit around the table. Do we understand this? We can't worship together around their throne if we're not even willing to sit around the table with the person on the right and the person on the left. Emphasis on right and left. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go there. (laughs) But you see what I'm saying? (laughs) If someone finally got it. Someone got it. Because here's the reality of loving one another. In a world that is so divided, communion is teaching us. And Jesus is prioritizing this in our life to be remembered that a divided world needs a united church. A divided world needs, has to have a united church. This is the hope of the world. This is what we're talking about. Even the Lord's Prayer, the instruction on how to pray, Jesus opens up with a very, very beautiful first word, our Father. Ours, all Father. As a parent, as a dad, it means so much to me. I care a lot about how my kids treat one another. How much more? Does our heavenly father care how you and I treat each other and have been treating each other all over the the smorgasbord of social media? Love one another. This is what this communion is saying. So we need to remember, 
We can't do this on our own. That Jesus delivered us from sin. That we need to love one another. But also, and maybe the most profound idea is, is this. That communion encourages us to remember how much God loves me. How much God loves me. You know what's interesting about this whole passage of communion, this Passover passage, is, 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 is that Jesus made it a point to bring up betrayal at one of the most sacred meals of the year, maybe ever. I mean, it, the prophecy already said that it would happen. If you're Jesus, why not just let it play out? Why bring it up at the table in this sacred moment? Community is at its utmost highest, right? It's, just, it's so critical, so important. Why even bring it up? And we tend to look at Judas, whether you've been in church or not, as with like judgmental eyes. Judas, oh, that Judas. Don't be such a Judas. He's a betrayer, right? This is how we do it. And certainly what he did was wrong, was bad. But the more I read this story, the more I understand the gospel here and what communion is teaching you and me, I believe that I can relate more to Judas than possibly any other disciple. Someone who has hurt Jesus and wronged Jesus and even betrayed Jesus at times. How many times have you and I betrayed Jesus right before we came to church? Maybe the tone we had with our family or with our kids. Man, pfft. Guilty, right? How many times have we betrayed Jesus or even have plans to betray Jesus later today, later this week? But you're going, oh, Miguel, but I've never traded Jesus for money. Really? You've, you've never traded, traded Jesus for monetary things, for selfish ambition and desires? You've never traded grace for greed? You've never forgotten Jesus because you're so consumed with the things that this world is going to give you and will give you and will constantly promise you, but it'll never happen, right? I think we can relate to Judas so much. People who have wronged Jesus, wronged God. But then this is profound. I continue to read and continue to pray and I realize something that the person, Judas, the person who hurt Jesus, wronged Jesus and betrayed Jesus, listen, was sitting at the table with Jesus. He still had a seat. Does anyone get this? Like he still had a seat at the table. Jesus didn't go, stop, can't come in. I already know what you're gonna do. Go ahead and live your life now, brother. You're out of the group, out of the small group, sorry. Okay? He knew, Jesus knew what, what, what Judas had just done, the deal he just made. And he knew what Judas was going to do later. And the crafty uh, uh, planning of, of I'm going to kiss him, I'm going to betray him with a kiss. And it's going to be, uh, Jesus knew all of that. And he still loved Judas. So no matter who, who you are, no matter what you've done or what's been done to you, you've got to get and remember this, God loves you, period. He loves you. And I understand because so many of us, maybe value was not placed on us as a child. So we grow up without having that placed on us. And as we grow up as adults, we start seeking value in other people and in other things. But you and I have to get this, that you know you don't have to post it to prove it. You have value that is already placed on you. His name is Jesus. It was shown and displayed on the cross. God loves you and me. And he doesn't stop loving. He doesn't grow tired of loving. He's not like an earthly father that just, there are days he's patient and there are days he's not patient. There are days he drinks coffee and he's good and other days he's not. Like he, it's not, it has nothing to do with any of those things. God is love. And regardless of what you've done, he loves you anyways. It's not about performance. No, no, no. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And we can't forget this. The reason why we go down these dark roads is because we have forgotten these things. Our lives are shaped by, 
by those who love us, but also by those who refuse to love us. And this entire Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, this entire Bible is God's greatest love story ever told. This is God's love affair with the human race, with people and all the planets and all the stars and galaxies and, and the multitudes of angels that sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And all of creation stand in awe of the love that God lavishes on you on, and me on this little planet called earth. And they're going, whoa, God loves them so much. And he knows that there are going to be times, man, we doubt and we question and we might even forget. So God comes down and he says, I, I'm so excited for this dinner. Listen, listen, this meal we're going to have together, you need to do this in remembrance because you're going to forget it. You need to do this in remembrance that we may never forget because in spite of our rebellion and our disobedience and, and, and all the things that we do wrong, in spite of the fact that we are gonna betray him sometimes, he loves us. God's love, he knows no bounds, no borders. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any more or any less. He loves you completely just as you are. Do you get this church? Do you understand this? You can't keep going back to that place where you said, but there was that time he, God goes, no, I've covered it in my blood. And so when the times come where we forget and we doubt, we just need to look to the cross. Look to the cross because that's the communion message is what he did and what he displayed. And as the, the old song goes, how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he would give his only son and make a wretch his treasure. Here's what I want us to do. If you have those communion cups, I want you to just take those out and hold them in your hands. If you're watching from home, you can go ahead and take those out. If you did pick those up at the church earlier this week, or if you're watching online, you can just grab a piece of bread of some kind or a cracker or even some juice to symbolize what we're gonna do here today. And here's what I want us to do during this next song. As the band is singing this communion song, I want you to amnesis. I want you to remember. Go back to that place when you first gave your life to Jesus and you were crying and you remember that service or that camp or that small group or that car ride and Caleb came on and you don't know why, but you started crying. Go back there. I want you to remember and bring to mind and reminisce on the, all the times that Jesus was faithful to you. You're going through a tough time right now. Go back. Remember, you were faithful. You were faithful to me then. I remember when I was a first time mom, a first time dad. I remember, man, we were paycheck to paycheck. Man, go back to that place and remember the faithfulness of God in your life. Remember that we can't do this on our own, that he delivered us from sin, that we need to love one another and that he loves you and me. As we listen to this song, prepare your hearts to remember. space 
you have one of these cups, go ahead and take it and peel off that top layer. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he met with his disciples. And he took the bread and after giving thanks, he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for communion. Thank you for what it reminds us. Lord, may we never forget the gospel. May we live out our lives in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. What a great service, right? Can we give it up for these guys? That song was so beautiful. Hey, we're so happy you joined us today. If you're a guest with us, we'd love to connect with you at the seven-minute meeting. Just look for the seven-minute meeting sign in the lobby. If you're watching online, you can put something in the comment field or just text connect me to 411247. We have a pastor team that's going to be meeting right outside these doors by the piano, by the pew. So if you need prayer for anything, head out there. They'd love to chat with you. On that, we love you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great week.